The rhino is sedated with a tranquilizer and a hole is drilled into its horn. A pink dye is injected. It's normally used to control ticks on animals. What we're trying to do is we're trying to contaminate the animal's horn with a mixture of uh, medicinal compounds meant for use on animals and an indelible dye. So what we're effectively doing is we're removing the value from the horn and vesting it back in the live animal where it belongs. Um, because unfortunately the status quo at the moment is that a dead rhino is worth more than a live rhino. So we want to change that. <laughs> The dye can be detected even when the horn has been ground to a fine powder. This is what a normal rhino horn looks like, and this is what it looks like when it's been contaminated. It has a very distinct smell, and it's toxic. That's why I'm wearing these gloves. If any of this gets onto my skin, it'll make me very sick. That's because it's dangerous to humans. Anyone who consumes it risks suffering nausea, stomach ache, and diarrhea. But the wardens say there's no chance anyone will die from it. In the first half of this year, almost 400 rhinos were killed in South Africa. Game wardens say up to 1,000 could die by the end of the year. Some of our own staff might be involved, unfortunately. Um, it really is a challenge. There's just too much money and um, too much hype about what these horns do. And they clearly don't do anything, but it's all a psychological thing. Dying rhino horns is only a temporary solution to buy time and hopefully save some animals. The idea behind it is that if poachers know horns in this part of the country have been contaminated, they are less likely to hunt here because they can't sell them. But after four years, the horn will grow out and the dye will disappear. It's hoped that by then a new and better method will have been found. Harumutasa, Al Jazeera, Simbambili Game Lodge, South Africa.